The following is a production of Learfield Sports. We took some time off, but now a new and improved UMass Sports Insider is ready to roll. After a long summer, the momentum is building for the UMass football team. Today, we'll take a look at a preseason camp for the Minutemen, along with a look back at a strong finish to 2017. Two of the top playmakers sit down to talk about optimism surrounding the program, and Coach Whipple gets mic'd up to take you inside the huddle at a recent practice. Plus, after a magical run last fall, what will men's soccer give as an encore in 2018? If you missed us, then get excited, we're back! UMass Sports Insider, let's go! Well, hello and welcome back to UMass Sports Insider. We're so happy to be back on the air and back on Nesson, our home from now until the end of March. We've got a jam-packed opening episode, so let's get right to it. Time to check in on preseason football camp. The Minutemen are excited to get it going as they are counting down to the home opening weekend. Being the senior quarterback, my job here is, is to, to be the leader of this team, and I, you know, I fully, fully embrace that role. Kind of crazy. This is my seventh camp, but I'm just uh, very excited and thankful to be out here. I'm getting another opportunity to do this and play the game that I love. It's the best summer we've had. You know, we've got a new strength staff. Something I really want to do is bring these young guys along. Um, you know, I think that we're fortunate on the offensive side of the ball to have a lot of guys that have had game action. I think we're deeper on, on both sides of the ball. Yeah, this is the deepest team we've had, you know, without question. And, and, and I think certainly the most experienced. We have a lot of guys that have a lot, played a lot of football in the last few years. we got a lot of talented receivers, but you know I'm saying, personally, I want 1,000, you know what I'm saying, 1,000 yards. Overall, the team goal, I want to win the bowl game. Not just get the one, I want to win one, you know what I'm saying. Everything is cool to get one, but if you don't win, it ain't nothing, you know what I'm saying. This camp really just, you know, I want everyone, you know, individually to get better and win that happens then we'll all come together as a team and you know work towards our main goal which is to you know win a bowl game. As you can see, it seems like the Minutemen are hitting on all cylinders early in camp. You know, the team is bringing quite a bit of momentum with it into this 2018 campaign, largely because of the way the final six weeks of 2017 transpired. Last season, UMass won four of its final six games to close out, including a signature road win at BYU. A breakout campaign from Andrew Ford and Mark Whipple's wide open offense alongside a much improved defensive unit gave UMass a springboard as it went into the offseason. They're going to give it on a jet sweep to Isabella. Left to the right, daylight in front, Isabella turns the corner and scores. The end of the season was fueled by a shootout win over Georgia Southern. Isabella the catch, racing inside the 20. and an epic two-overtime victory at home against Appalachian State, punctuated by a dramatic walk-off field goal from Logan Lorenz. Kick has the leg, kick is drilled, it's through the middle, end over end, it's good! The individual accolades rolled in for the Minutemen, highlighted by tight end Adam Brenneman, who earned All-American honors. In the left corner of the end zone, it is caught! Brenneman got his feet in bounds, touchdown UMass! Well, a huge reason for that late success last season was the man taking the snaps under center. UMass has long had a tradition of great quarterback play, and the man who will be a senior leader for Coach Whipple's team this year hopes to further etch his name into the program record books with a standout campaign. For now, let's meet the man who is one of the leaders of the club, 2018 quarterback Andrew Ford. Looking deep, and it is caught! Snap to Andrew Ford, who's looking deep, down the middle. Down inside the 10, now the 5, and in! 
it's gone by so fast. Um, you know, I know when I was a freshman at Virginia Tech, some of those kids were saying, you know, enjoy it. It's, it's going to be gone in a blink of an eye, and my path is definitely not what I expected it to be, but it's still flown by. Um, so I'm um, just trying to soak it all in, have some fun with it, um, but understand that, you know, we have a lot of business to take care of on the field this year. Andrew didn't get here till uh, the summer, so um, he didn't have spring practice, and you know, Ross had been in the system a couple of years, and he just got better and better. I just think there's no greater teacher than, than experience, and once Andrew started playing, he understood our schemes and understood the defense. I probably put a little bit too much on his plate early, but, you know, one of the early games was Mississippi State where he made some great plays, and then, you know, you know they've got some speed um, in the SEC, and I think it showed up a little bit more against South Carolina, how much better he got. And then the last game against Hawaii, you know, we threw, you know, four touchdowns and no interception. I think he had three touchdowns against Troy. So as it went into it, he just, uh, we got a little bit better of a um, feel for one another and the things that he liked. And we groomed a little bit of the system around him. And, uh, you know, he just, he's taken off since then. The, the first year here, it wasn't really him changing the offense because I'm left-handed. It was him tweaking some things to stuff that I did better, stuff that I liked more. So our offense hasn't changed because I'm left-handed. I just think it's stuff that I like you know, a little bit better. It's the snap, bootleg left, throws it into the flat. It's caught by Lee, the fullback. He's prepared, and th that, that gets him uh, automatic respect from the, the rest of the team, the rest of the offense. and. Uh, you know, and then, then um, he's made the plays. He made the plays in big games and uh, um, can throw the deep ball. He's got a strong arm, uh, maybe a little stronger than it looks when you're a left-hander, but uh, really good touch I and mean, just a, a great command. So uh, just been a blast to coach for uh, all of us, especially myself. We have guys all over the field that are capable of making big-time plays. So for me, it makes my job easy because, you know, defenses can't game plan to shut down one guy. Um, you know, a lot of guys are going to be focused on Andy Isabella, but I think that opens up opportunities for guys like City Palmer and Brennan Dingle and Jesse Britt. And then you, know, you try and take the pass away, and then we, you know, we have backs like Bilal and Marquise that, you know, that, that can break it any, at each and every single play. So for me, it makes my job easy. You just got to you know, get the ball out quick and let them make plays. So um, you know, it, I'm excited. I know Coach Football has been chomping at the bit to put some of this new stuff in. I think if you ask every single guy in that locker room, our goal would be to win a bowl game. I think that we're very set on that, and that's important to have everybody working towards the same goal. But for me personally, you know, I'm just really trying to, to better myself each and every single day on and off the field, bring these young guys, you know, up to speed uh, that just got here. And some of the younger guys that have played before, take them to that next level and really, you know, expand, you know, their football knowledge, but also how to, you know, handle yourself off the field. Um, with the success that comes with it. So for me, you know, I, it's obviously very important what, what I do for these younger guys on the field, but I'm also looking forward to help them grow off the field as well. Well, thanks so much, Andrew. No doubt the senior quarterback is itching to get things underway, get the offense rolling to start the season. Well, it's time for us to take our first break here on UMass Sports Insider, but don't go far away. When we come back, we'll take a look at the off-season workout program the Minutemen went through to get ready for the upcoming season. And we'll go inside the huddle with Coach Whipple. Stay tuned. This is the place where planets collide. Where Pulitzer and Fulbright are full-time residents where 28,000 brilliant young minds from 65 countries call home. This is the place that propels the state and lifts the world. UMass Amherst, this is the place. The Learfield Directors' Cup, the highly recognized mark of distinction in college athletics across all divisions, both men's and women's sports. Follow your favorite team's pursuit for excellence in this prestigious annual award through thedirectorscup.com, USA Today, or at L Directors' Cup on Twitter or Facebook. 
Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics since 1993. Go to the ground, Harrington fumbled the football right back and UMass takes it right back. Isaiah Rogers recovers it for the Minutemen. Off to the left, first down and more, 20, 10, 5, Ali has the hat trick. Hey, welcome back. You know, most students go home over the summer, but not the UMass football team who were hard at work under new sports performance director Brian Phillips, getting ready to be in peak performance mode by the time camp started. Let's take a look back and see what they did and how hard they worked to get ready for another season. Being the best version of yourself on a daily basis, that's all you can try to do every single day, and then building those factors of trust and brotherhood and culture, that stuff's gonna come along if you get yourself right first. But it starts right there with you, being real, understand that on a daily basis. The opportunity to come back to my home state at an FPS institution uh, to train this program, I felt like it was, a, it was an opportunity I couldn't pass up and the people really make the place, and, and that was my initial connection that really drew me here to UMass. Try to tie in the, the entire student athlete, you know, and, and we try to take on a holistic approach where it's not just about training. Nutrition is important, the psychological needs are important, their lifestyle habits like their sleep and nutrition and, and hydration, um, all those things really tie in to make a really good athlete. And what we focus on here is trying to train the person and, and develop relationships with them, show them that we care about them. And when those things are set in stone, I think it makes the training process real easy. And, and this is a simple thing where we probably train more movement-based style fair. We put a lot of emphasis on our running, on our efficiency, uh, on the ability to land, the ability to change direction. We try to tie all those needs into not just lift weights. We don't just spend time in the weight room. It's an essential component of our program, absolutely. We want to be strong, but we want to be able to express that strength on the field. And we feel like we can best do that when we're efficient movers, and we can train speed at high levels and year round. So a movement philosophy, taking a holistic approach, and really trying to train the student athlete the best we can. But these guys, Division One football is Division One football. It's 11 versus 11. Our pillar is movement, you know, mindset. A better human being makes a better teammate, better person. And like that all just builds into a better athlete as well. Nutrition, we've done some things to try to implement better nutrition for them just to make sure that they're not as inflamed all the time. And recovery, trying to get them to that parasympathetic state, trying to get them to turn it off. And when we come in here and we train and we lift, things are done fast and you got to be tough finishing what we start. You know, everybody knows how to make somebody strong, but those other little things that I believe in Brian that we're trying to implement this summer to actually have a, a successful year. Well, as you can see, the Minutemen appear to be lean and mean heading into the 2018 season. We thank Coach Phillips for being with us and all the great work he's done in the weight room to get the players prepared for the start of the campaign. Hey, have you ever wondered what a practice looks like from the head coach's perspective? If you have, we've got a treat for you because recently we put a microphone on Coach Whipple during one of the preseason practices and let's take a look at what it looks like practice from coach's perspective. Same play, same play. Should just be solid, right? Third and five, third and five. Coming back on the left side. Everybody's got choice route. Sit on it, sit, sit. Good, 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 good. Deeper, 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 deeper. Good, stay high on it. Good, that's it, good. Good spot, good spot, good spot. Good spot, good spot. Good, Sadiq. That's it, good. All right, you're drifting left and you're throwing right. You got nothing on it, good. Higher angle on him. You gotta go higher angle. He should never cross the hash. Good, 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 good. Good, good. Good, good Mike, fine, hang on it, good. Good, finish. That's it, Sadiq. Get it, get a good route, finish it. Oh, Andrew, good, good, good. Finish it, Jared, okay. Bang, you gotta run, or keep the ball up, because then you throw, as soon as you go. Good route, Dante. X shorter than we get him off, right? So which way'd you go? Well, we'll look at it, we'll look at it, get the next play. 
Thanks so much to Coach Whipple for giving us that inside access that you can't get anywhere else. Well, we are halfway through the program, but we've got so much more to come, so stay with us. When we come back, we sit down with the elder statesman of the defense. Then we take a look back at the magical run for men's soccer last fall, and what will Fran O'Leary's squad have as an encore in 2018? That and more, so don't go far. Welcome back. Our premiere of UMass Sports Insider this year is rolling along. Well, it is not often that you get a college career that lasts for seven years, but that's the case with the leader of the UMass defense. He's known for his flowing locks and bone crunching hits, but Brighton Barr has had to overcome numerous injuries to become one of the stalwarts of the UMass defense. As he gets ready to start his final year in a uniform, let's sit down with Brighton Barr. So I grew up in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, um, went to a smaller high school, uh, I was a, a one star coming out of Mechanicsburg and you know wasn't a big name guy, undersized, still am undersized, uh, but really just you know my work ethic and um, my motor that just doesn't stop is what allowed me to play at the next level. I was granted a 6th and 7th year from the NCAA which is pretty unreal I thought and uh, I just thought it was time to move on from Taos and see if I could start a somewhat of a new career, I guess you could say. Um, and thankfully, Coach Whip and the the other coaching staff gave me an, another opportunity to play up here at UMass. When we met him, he was, he was uh, just a, a really, really good kid, and uh, you know. I've done this a long time now, and uh, sometimes, you know, you listen to what the players, a lot of times we'll listen to what the players have to say, and those two guys, Adam and, and Andrew, are pretty good players, and good judge of character, and, uh, you know, they were right, so uh, it's, it's, he's really helped us. During the spring, one of the things we said, the most important recruit we get is to have Brighton Barr return, and, you know, he had an option not to return, and, uh, you know, I can't stress how important he is to our team. Just the, the physicality that he brings to the game, the leadership, the way he does things the right way uh, is really, really impressive. You know, we use that expression, what kind of team would we be if everybody was like me? And if everybody was like Brighton Barr, we, we'd be pretty exceptional. Brighton just loves the game. He loves the practice. You know, there's a lot of guys like the game. They don't like to practice, but he brings a... Uh, you know, a, a special energy on practice days. You got to be strong up the middle. Um, you know, we're faster all the way around on defense, and uh, 
um, you know, those guys really believe in him and, and the entire program, the coach, staff, and the players, and uh, everybody that's seen him play, you know, is ex excited for what his senior season is going to bring. I played middle linebacker in high school. Uh, that's where I felt comfortable playing. And when I when they moved me to middle linebacker up here, I was just like, you know, I feel at home. I feel comfortable. And you know, I was fortunate enough to you know start against Hawaii and had a pretty good uh, opening game, and just kind of trickled down for the rest of the season. When Coach Ripple offered me that that scholarship to come up here and play with, you know, two great friends uh, that I've known since high school and I knew that I'd be living with them too. Just kind of, we had talked about it, you know, kind of jokingly back in high school, you know, like what if we all played together at the same school and it ended up happening and uh, it's kind of funny looking back. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I'm just very thankful for the opportunity and, you know, still thankful because I am finally playing my last year of college football seven years later and never thought I'd be here right now, but just very thankful. Well, thank you, Brayton. What a great story. And we know that Coach Whipple and defensive coordinator Ed Pinkham are thrilled to see what Brayton can bring to the field in his senior season. Well, speaking of great stories, how about UMass men's soccer a year ago? For head coach Fran O'Leary, the team was celebrating the 10-year anniversary of a magical run to the College Cup. And wouldn't you know it, these 10 years later, they were able to win the Atlantic 10 and return to the NCAA tournament for the first time in nine years. Recently, we sat down with the head coach. Here's Fran O'Leary to give us a look back and a preview of what's to come in 2018. Terrific year to, to win the league and then win the conference title. Uh, was probably beyond our dreams given I think we were picked to finish 8th or ninth at the outset of the year. All credit to our guys. I don't think you, you have a season like that unless you've got a group of guys who are committed to each other, have a good attitude, good mentality, uh, great camaraderie. I think we went through a spell where we, we went 9 wins and 2 ties in 11 games. Having the, the older guys back was a source of inspiration. The mentality of the team, we, we never gave up, didn't panic when things went against us. We had to, to get that streak or to keep a streak, any streak, you've got to come from behind at times. And when we went down, we went to St. Louis for a goal down in the first five or six minutes and just, just kept our cool and just kept playing. That's again a credit to the maturity of the group we had last season. Conference tournament in and of itself was a, a fantastic experience. To get a home game on Rudd, Conor O'Dwyer scored a terrific goal off a corner kick, then sent us down to, to Fordham to shut them out and get a win in overtime. Obviously, you felt the, thing, the momentum beginning to grow going into a final against VCU, who are probably the most talented team in our conference. One of the most pleasing things, it was obviously very pleasing to win the conference title, but the impact several local lads had in it. Uh, Dave has been an Amherst boy, uh, Alec DeSantis, who was here during the tough time, Times. and Matt Mooney. Matt Mooney was named MVP of it. Alex scored a, a cracking third goal. Davis got ultimately the winning goal. So all in all, you could not have scripted it better for us. It's going to be a challenging season. I think our, our goal is the same, which is to get better and have fun. With two very big games. Uh, UNH is one of the few teams to beat us in the regular season. Uh, Clemson are, are one of the top teams in the country. So it will be a good marker for us where we are in the world. We've graduated a lot of talented players, but the more than their talent, they're, they're a, intelligent, uh, mature guys. The challenge for us this coming year is to maintain that level of maturity, intelligence, stability in the program. And that, that's the challenge for all of our returning players and for the group that comes in also. It is always great to hear from Coach O'Leary. We wish his squad best of luck as they start their practice schedule, getting ready to make a defense of their Atlantic 10 championship this year. Well, hey, time for us to take one final break here on UMass Sports Insider this week, but don't go away. When we come back, it's time to see what advice our upperclassmen wish someone had shared with them when they first came to college. Ah, uh, that sounds like the lighter side. It's back and we'll be back in a flash. Go to the ground, Harrington fumbled the football right back and UMass takes it right back. Isaiah Rogers recovers it for the Minutemen. It's off to the left, first down and more, 20, 10, 5, Ali has the hat trick. This is the place where planets collide. 
where Pulitzer and Fulbright are full-time residents. Where 28,000 brilliant young minds from 65 countries call home. This is the place that propels the state and lifts the world. UMass Amherst, this is the place. Welcome back to UMass Sports Insider. We're almost finished with our season premiere, but we can't leave you without bringing back a fan favorite. It's time for the lighter side. And hey, as students are starting to trickle back into campus, we thought we'd check in with some of our veterans and ask them, what is a piece of advice that you wish you'd gotten as you first came to college? Let's check out the answers. I would say to take full advantage of grab and go at Roots. It's the absolute best breakfast on campus. Don't go to break at noon. Do not go to break. Lines are too long. Might be late here at one o'clock class. So as a freshman coming in, is food really like one of the key things to focus on that first year? Food is fuel, of course it is. What's your backup place? Uh, usually hemp because it's like right across the street. I would say to get a bike. It's a lot of walking. So I wish I would have got a bike freshman year. Parking services, get a parking pass. I didn't have a parking pass my freshman year and I got a good amount of tickets. And uh, excuses only work so often. I only got one excused. Um, I used anything from emergency, I had to use the bathroom, um, my car battery died, I had to bring a heavy box inside. It, it stops working. 10 speed, maybe something with some style. What kind of bike would, would you want? I don't know much about bikes, so. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, just something to get you around, to be honest. I've seen skateboarders. Yeah. Would skate Skateboards or? If you can skateboard, yeah, but for me, no. What are some maybe some off-known places that most people might not know of? So my freshman year, I parked down near the softball fields, and they never ticketed me the entire first semester. I would never pick an 8 a.m. class. You think you can do it. You can't. 10 would do that for me. I could make that, but then after lunch, that's hard too, you know you're tired from eating. So you need a break after that too. <laughs> Good stuff guys. Well that's gonna do it for our first edition of UMass Sports Insider this year. We thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to mark your calendars for Saturday, August 25th. It's UMass football season opener at McGurk as they take on Duquesne. I'm Josh Maurer, again thanks for watching. We'll see you at McGurk and we'll see you right back here next time.